There's no risk. And with my promo code Burr, you get the special offer that includes a four-week trial plus free. This is like overselling. We got it. It's fucking amazing. You get a fucking special offer that includes four-week trial plus free postage in a digital, digital scale. No long-term contracts. Just go to Stamps.com. Click on the microphone at the top of the homepage and type in Burr. B-U-R-R. Stamps.com. Promo code Burr. B-U-R-R. B-U-R-R. Stamps.com. Never go to the post office again. All right. All right. Now it's on to you guys. Well, it's about time. I just feel like doing 45 minutes about how much you love Tom Brady. It's a little tone deaf during the pandemic. Um, anyway, okay, here we go. Iran, coming in from Iran, coming in hot. All right. Hey, Bill, my name is Amir Abbas Ali Mohammed. Dude, you have to get into show business. You have to be a boxer or something. Fighting out of the blue corner. He's the current middleweight champion in Iran. His name is Amir Abba Ali Mohammed. No, Mohammed D. You got an I at the end of it. All right. Yes, that's a long name. Hey, dude, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar was one of my favorite sports names of all time. Yes, that's a long name. I'm an 18-year-old Iranian. I live in Tehran, and I'm a game designer. So you're crushing it. You basically live in the Manhattan of, uh, you live in the New York City of Iran. You design games. Well, I want to know, but what kind of games do you design? Are they the same, same ones we do over here? Like, what does your version of Grand Theft Auto look like? I want to, I want to see that. Uh, and I want to work in big game development studios in the future. I know. They probably have you guys all sewed up over there too, right? Can you break off and start your own shit? Um, so you actually get the credit? Anyway, I love Western countries and especially America. I love American, mus- American musicians like Elvis or Frank Sinatra. Look at that. He's going old school here. Uh, so what do you think of Iran? You know, life is kind of hard here, but hey, I don't blame America for it. It's mostly our government's fault. When you see in the media about the people is mostly wrong, but everything you hear about my government, you have to multiply by 10 to understand how evil they are. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Is this real? Dude, if your government's that evil, why the fuck did you have me say your name? I'm going to bleep out your fucking name, unless this is just some redneck writing in, pretending to be an Iranian. I have no idea. Um, Anyway, I don't want to get you in trouble. Um... Where am I? Uh, what you hear, you've seen it, it's 10 times evil. Okay, I watch your stand-ups and I really love them. I like Louis C.K. too. And of course, you were amazing in The Mandalorian, by the way. You were way better than all of the... Okay, 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 let's, let's take it down a little. Uh, so what do, you, what do you think of Iran? If you have any passport other than American passport, you can visit our country. Sorry for my English. Um... What do I think about it? Unfortunately, I'll probably never go there because of the relationship that, uh, you know, you and I could hang out, you know. We wouldn't have a problem. Talk video games and comedy and fucking movies and shit. But, like, for some reason, the cunts at the top can't seem to settle their differences without having to have people from, uh, you know, friends you know, friends I know, go over there, you know, over here, whatever. You try to kill each other. It's fucked. I don't, I don't get why war is still legal. I don't understand it. You know, I can't do a Caitlyn Jenner joke, but, like, we can fucking <laughs> go around bombing countries or they can bomb us. I, I just don't understand it. Um, yeah, it's just all that fucking paranoia. It's real. I don't know. I guess you have to have a healthy thing. What do I think about it? Um, I'll be honest with you. I'm worried for you guys. I'm worried for a guy like you. All right? If you're a real person, if this isn't just somebody fucking with me, like just regular people over there, I would hate to be in your situation where, you know, you're sitting on top of a bunch of stuff that another nation wants. Um, you know, like I said, I really wish Joe Biden would just take a ride in a Tesla and we would sort of just at some point walk away from these fucking oil companies or just let them in on the whole solar thing so they can transition over because they're killing all of us. The banks and oil companies are just killing all of us. They're just fucking just greedy cunts. I mean, it's not just them. There's other people. And I'm also a selfish cunt. I just don't run an oil company. So I don't know. 
I don't, I don't, I don't have any. What do I think about you guys? I hope you're safe. I hope we don't go to war with each other. I hope all your dreams come true. I hope you're able to design games and find love and have some kids and just have live a full life. That's what I want for everybody. Unless you're a cunt. If you're a cunt, I hope you walk into the sea and help feed the fish. All right. I ran. Okay. Trump versus Biden. Uh, Bill, you're listening to the bullshit on this. Trump tore up our nuclear treaty with Iran in the beginning of his term. Trump thought it was too soft on Iran. Trump dropped a bomb on one of Iran's top generals. Uh, Trump treated all kinds of war on Iran during his whole term. Biden is trying to renegotiate the old treaty. No biggie. Yeah, treaty negotiations. Talk, big talk, but compared to what we had the last four years, go fuck yourself. Well, uh, those were four sentences. I'll give you that, but I I don't, you know. Listen, dude, if you saw how many bombs fucking Obama dropped, I don't know how to tell you this, dude. They're all working for the same guy, the same guys. And I will say the one thing about Trump was... They nobody knew what the fuck he was going to do. That's why he had to go. Not because progressives were sick of him. I think because nobody could make any fucking money because you got to know what the guy's going to do. That guy had zero tendencies. You could be the biggest fucking Trump fan in the world. And all you knew was that he wasn't going to do what people were suggesting to do. That's all you knew. Um, he, He is a contrarian's contrarian. Um, but I also don't pay attention that much to politics. I don't give a fuck. Okay. I like people. I don't think we should drop bombs to settle our fucking differences. And I don't think that makes me a fucking hippie either. Um, it's fucking bananas, man, but whatever. That's how we do it. It's how we've always done it. And it's how we're going to continue doing it. So what are you going to do? Um, sorry. Okay. Screaming so much during the game, my throat's getting a little scratchy here. Oh, jeez, it's getting a little scratchy. All right, another one from Iran. Dear Billy Barracks, uh, you're right about Iran. Oh, now I'm right. People, I don't know shit about Iran. Um, the U.S. will be leading the charge and removing leadership. It won't be as bloody as Iraq, but we're going to fuck shit up. I work in the government, and I can tell you that the amount of chatter has gone up a bit in the last year or two. According to an older colleague of mine, this is how... It went with Iraq. Well, they're using the same fucking story. Even if 9-11 hadn't happened, we could have gone into Iraq with the propaganda machine that was barreling down the track. Some people think 9-11 just pushed up the schedule to go to Iraq, which makes sense if, since it had nothing to do with 9-11. And it seemed like some people really wanted to get in there. Trump is a tough guy, so he needed the nuclear treaty with Iran cause... Oh, because he thought it was too soft. But he thought, but but he could only really do that because the military industrial, oh God, this word, military industrial complex let him. Now, is the military industrial complex, that is the corporations that sort of dictate where the military goes? The industrial being corporations, industry? I think that was one of the biggest blunders in American history was that uh, Eisenhower called it the military industrial complex to the point that the lay person dummy like me has no idea what he's talking about. Anyway, um, he should have been like, these fucking oil companies are going to start determining where we go. Uh, I think they did. So uh, they could blame him for when we go to war under Biden. Um, well, I mean, then you're kind of assuming that everybody is liberal that is involved in that. Um, I just don't think it matters. Like, I think if one of those other Republicans won the nomination and beat Hillary, which was easy just because she was a terrible public speaker, terrible public speaker, and it's show business. You got to get up there and, you know, fucking <laughs> twirl the baton, right? Um I think we probably would have gone in. I just think that that's just how it works. If you want to get the mansion on Martha's Vineyard, you got to do what they say. Anyways, Biden's cabinet is full of Bush, Obama era warmongers. They'll be the ones who actually go to war. All right. Well, I don't pay attention to this shit, but that, a lot of that stuff made sense to me. You don't have to agree with it. So people, please don't email me in capital letters 
It's just a podcast, all right? Let's try to stay focused here. Uh, Stimulus. Um, That's a great name for like a a Greek porn star. Steve Stimulus, you know? Sort of sounds Greek. He's also going to be stimulating him with his giant Greek fucking porno cock. No? All right. Hey, Bill, my delusional family, coworker, and friends all told me that when Biden won, we get the stimulus check we deserved. I made some of them say it on video because I knew they'd twist their words. Oh, that's great. You got them to say it on video. They were all wrong, and I've been gloating. The news barely covers it, and there are less demands from Twitter activists. Anyways, no stimulus, even with the Dems in charge. I think you're a fucking moron if you believe that only the Republicans are evil. I actually always argued that Democrats were worse because at least the Republicans don't pretend like they give a fuck about me. You know, they're like, fuck you. Fucking pull yourself up by your own bootstraps. I got money and you can watch me spend it for all I give a fuck. You can starve right on my front yard. I don't give a shit. And the Democrats like, we love you, we love you. And then they didn't drop bombs and buy mansions in fucking Martha's Vineyard. They're all the same fucking cunts. All right, my dad's anger gave him Parkinson's. Oh, you motherfucker. Well, some people's anger gives them a heart attack. Who's, oh God, is this, oh, ladies and gentlemen, it's time for the adventures of Internet Doctor. <laughs> My favorite show on TV, Internet Doctor. He never went, he and she never went to medical school. They just went on a website and they read some stuff. Okay. Hi, Bill. I just saw another clip of you raging on people's now overly sensitive attitudes. A menial job worker sucking at their menial job and your dad being someone you were scared of. Uh, it's like we lived the same youth. Part of it is definitely the old man who's the angriest person I ever met. I am 38 years old with two little girls and my wife is constantly telling me to calm down after I overreact at my kids moving their chairs without lifting them. I don't yell at my kids, but I I yell at stuff, TVs, phones, toasters, Uh, just dragging the thing across the floor, guaranteeing a knock on the door from our downstairs neighbor. I hold in my fury until the neighbor leaves, then lose it at my kids. Ah, uh, dude, you can't yell at your kids. Uh, he goes, it sucks, but they should lift their fucking chairs. Yeah, but dude, your kids shouldn't pay for your childhood. Um, you got to work on that, man. And I'm, I'm, I'm saying this to you and to me because I, I, I don't want this. Uh, that's why I was so thrilled when people said you have like happy kids. Um. Uh, He says, anyway, my dad was diagnosed with Parkinson, and I shit you not, the doctor said he wouldn't be surprised if my dad had anger issues. Like, if you spend your life angry, you end up with Parkinson's as the ultimate karmic payback. Yeah, I don't buy that. It scared the shit out of me, and I was hoping you could make some jokes about it to lighten the mood. All all the best. Yeah, I mean, I mean, that's just a theory. And also, if you really look at why so many people are angry, it's because they were hurt as kids. And I don't think when you're a defenseless kid that if somebody was evil to you, mean to you, or frightened you, that you should pay the cost. Shouldn't the person that yelled at you? I guess if you're yelling at your kids. But I'm not yelling at my kids. I don't yell at my kids. So I don't know, dude. I, I think it probably comes comes down to, you know, I think it's a little more beyond that. But I I also, I kind of believe that like, I do think if you're an abusive, in your, in a verbally abusive relationship for years and years and years, that that, that does some sort of, however you hold on to it, I think it's probably unique. You know, some people might get like, uh, I don't know, Physical ailments, other people might get a fucking disease. I have no idea how it works. I'm not a doctor. But I, if I had to guess, in years to come, they're going to sort of map out some shit of how a disease cannot be necessarily in your family tree, but, but some bullshit you went through. Um, they'll probably then realize that meditation is the way to cure a lot of stuff, at which point the pharmaceutical companies will suppress that information and then come up with drugs and try to do things to keep you angry so they can keep making money. 
That's what I would guess. Um, all right. Girlfriend will leave me if I don't get a normal job. Okay. Hey, Billy Ballbag. Uh, I love your show. And I know you don't like compliments, so I'll just cut to the chase. Thank you. I'm an 18-year-old redheaded dude just like yourself. I've been dating my girlfriend for the last two months, two and a half years, sorry. It's been going great. We very much enjoy each other's company and have some of the same interests. But here is the problem. I'm trying to become a comedian. I don't want to get on stage as, I want to get on stage as soon as I can to make a career out of it. That means I don't want to go to college and get a desk job. I've told my girlfriend that I, I will still work my ass off to help pay the bills when we eventually move in together. Dude, these are some deep conversations for 18. She doesn't see comedy as a good job for her spouse to have. I've told her I'm already trying to get my name out there by starting a podcast, but she sees it as a temporary thing. She's threatened to leave me if I don't go to college and get a degree in some bullshit that I don't want to do. Uh, I don't know what to say to her. I love her so much, but I don't want to give up my dream. Any advice is helpful. Thanks and go fuck yourself. Yeah, dude, you need to dump her. If she doesn't come around, this is what, this is what you, you don't need to dump her. You just say, say, listen, I'm doing this. This is my dream. And I want to be with somebody that is going to support my dream. I'm going to support your dreams. Okay. But your dream can't be that my dream doesn't come true. Okay. That's like with the genie wishes. You can't wish for more wishes, right? It's like, if your dream is to become a nurse, I will support you doing that. First of all, dude, this is way too serious a fucking relationship to be in at 18 years of age. What is it, the 1700s? You're going to die when you're 30? Um, this is what you, you want to fucking make it as a comic? You fucking go be a comedian. And you don't let anybody tell you you can't fucking do it. And you, don't, you know, you learn from people, you keep your ears open, you be, uh, you know, nice to people and everything. But the second you get somebody coming at you, trying to take, you know, trying to take that light out of you, you just shut it down, dude. You shut it down. And this is a great fucking experience for you to have at this age because I didn't figure this shit out till I was about 10 years older than you. And now I literally, I don't have anybody in my life like that now. And like, if I even sense that around me, like I almost break out in hives. I just get like, I don't, I don't like literally walk away from them, but I just go in my head. I just go, I am, I, this, this is just bounce. It just bounces off me. I'm not listening to any of this shit. And, uh, yeah, if you try to sell me on fear, I'm not listening to you. Sell me on logic. Okay. As long as what I'm doing is rational. Like if my dream was to become the best hitman the CIA has ever had, then like, you know, I can see you trying to talk, Hey, you know, you're going to have to fucking bet you when you get older, even if it was good for the country, you might see that a few of them, maybe, you know, you probably see, you know, you know, you're just going to go tell jokes. So if you really love her and everything and she really loves you, you'll be able to work it out. But I would just say, I would just say this to her, just say, listen, this is my dream and I'm going to do this. And if this is going to work, I need you to support me. You got to support my dream. I'm not asking you to, to work all day why I don't have a job. And, um, and this is the thing, dude, if she walks away, right, who gives a fuck? then she wasn't the one for you. You're only 18 years of age. And dude, you could become a fucking comedian. You could start selling tickets. I mean, dude, I went to summer school, like fucking, I should have gone every year, but I had a cool teacher my sophomore year and senior year, what was the point? I said, fuck it. And I still made, okay? And I'm making way better a living than I would have if I did some of the other jobs I thought of doing. So, I mean, you're going... I mean, anytime you're going after your dream, I mean, that's just like, that's, no one should ever take that from you, dude. Don't let anybody ever do that, okay? And that's a really, um, she's only, if she's your age, I mean, whatever. I mean, you guys are still kids, so she doesn't know any better, and I don't know what. But um, I got to be honest, I can forgive that at 18, but like, there's only like, I don't know. If somebody's still saying that shit, by 24, if you're saying that, male or female, you're a cunt. And you need, you need to be shown the door. All right? 
But you guys are just kids. So, dude, you go do your fucking stand-up, and you don't let anybody stop you, all right? And, you know, it's going to be an amazing, amazing journey. I had such an amazing time, and there's a bunch of fucking hills you got to climb and all this stuff, then that gives you all your stories that builds your character and all of that. But I'll tell you, climbing those hills, the last fucking thing you need is someone hanging on your leg trying to drag you back down it. So have your conversation, all right? And if she breaks up with you, go watch The Bronx Tale, and you know that everybody gets three great women, all right? So you still got two more coming, and you just make sure the next one Or the one after that supports your dream. Or they can all hit the fucking bricks. That's what I say. All right. Congratulations to Tom Brady and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Woo!